Hey hey, what's up? I'm Whale Tits, and you're watching another Soda Zero Spotlight, this time featuring Roulette Jackson. Mm, though don't ask me how they came up with the name. I don't know. Let's start off with an overview of Jackson's skills, and the changes made to him, beginning with the rework to his heroic passive. For those of you who remember, Jackson's 4.0, 5.0 heroic passive, Mastermind, granted him intelligence on hero kills and creep kills, much like Mandrake's current passive. However, his new 6.0 passive, Reactive Armor, gives him instead shields based on 15% of the spell damage he causes with his abilities. Why the change? Jackson's role in the game has always been as a crowd control initiator tank that people want to stay away from. Now, his heroic passive reflects that tanky nature, encouraging Jackson players to run right into the middle of the fight, as opposed to his old passive, which made him more suitable as a snowball carry. Do note, that this passive does not proc on item effects such as Sunflare Gun and Superheated Mantle. Jackson's Q, Optic Beam, hasn't changed much since 5.0 and remains a uh, channeled damage over time ability. The main difference in 6.0 is that it's no longer AoE, but instead it gets stronger the longer it's channeled, up to 50% up to more damage, at which point it explodes dealing AoE damage. Despite its long range, it's fairly easy to get away from, and is no longer AoE, so I get the skill second, and I max it last. Jackson's W, Magnetic Presence, is an amazing aura slow in a radius of 3.5. At level 4, enemies lose a whopping 25% move speed and attack speed. This skill will make Jackson almost impossible to chase down, and almost impossibly hard to lane against if you are melee. I grab this skill third, and I max it second. Jackson's E, Magnetic Link, is exactly the same as its 4.0, 5.0 counterpart. And what it does is it creates a beam between Jackson and all enemies in a radius of 4. And that beam silences for up to 4 seconds or until it is broken by the target being more than 4 units away from Jackson. The beam does damage on impact as well as stunning for 1 second and dealing the same amount of damage if it breaks. As an AoE skill, it's imperative that you get this at level 1 to take advantage of your heroic passive. And as it's a more reliable damage than your Q, I take it first and I max it first. Keep in mind with this skill that you have to choose between whether you want to keep the target silenced for as long as possible or whether you want to burst him down by moving away and breaking the link. Finally, Jackson's ultimate, Mass Effect, has also undergone heavy changes from its 4.0, 5.0 counterpart, again to help Jackson fulfill that role as an initiator. Jackson's new ult sucks enemies within a radius of 5.5 to him, and suns them for up to 1.5 seconds at max level. This ult completes Jackson's now amazing skill set as an initiator, and will be the first skill you use in a teamfight, setting up your silence and your optic beam, as well as bringing enemies into your aura and granting you a great initial shielding. For talents on Jackson, I run my standard 0 11, 14 build, focusing on strong early game, and as you won't be the major damage deal on your team, but really you'll be the initiator, the extra health always helps. I do the same modifications to this build that I do for Toxie, because you are an AoE hero, and you'll benefit greatly from having the bonus minerals on assists, as well as the energy regen, so that you can spam your skills in lane. For items on Jackson, I'll start with a Pendant and a Transporter if I'm going mid, or, if I can, I'll grab a Sustainer Space Battery Lane for the side lanes. From there I rush a Warp Frag, as it's absolutely imperative on Jackson for that mobility to use your ult. If I'm doing poorly at this point, I'll grab another Duran's Buckler, just for some extra health and tankiness. Or, if I'm doing phenomenally, or really poorly, I'll grab a Call of Stone. I follow that with finishing my Void Seppers, and then it's between a Nitrogen Retrofit and an Ehon Crystal. I personally prefer to grab the Ehon Crystal first because I think the amount of CC provided by your double ult is out outweighs the little bit of slow you have on Nitrogen. But if you're having health issues, feel free to grab the Nitrogen first. You definitely want both of them though. From there, I build a Chilling Artifact and a Dark Steel. Alternative items to consider if you're absolutely kicking ass are an Argus Crystal, and maybe a Sunflare Gun, but I would, I would not get a Sunflare Gun. I don't think you need it. Your passive uh, makes up for the spell vamp plenty. 
For laning phase with Jackson, I like to put him in the suicide lane, the lane furthest from the tower, just because his aura and silence are great for escapes. He combos amazingly with Micros or Drakes, who can both pull the enemies to him, as well as LZ who can trap them in his beam. But Jackson can also serve as a competent babysitter for squishies in the safe lane. If you find yourself getting pushed hard in lane, don't hesitate to spam your skills on the wave. However, Jackson is best when he can keep that threat of his EQ combo and use that to zone out the enemy heroes, and only use his auto attack to get last hits. In this scene, I'm at incredibly low health, my laning partner is not here, and I know that they're going to try and tower dive me, so I head to the bush so they can't see me, and I can get my silence off on Tekra before he can Q me, before he can see me, and that brings him low enough that he dies, he can't get a single skill off, he didn't get a single auto attack off on me. If he had, I would be dead, but instead, I get the kill. In this following scene, I guess it's fairly similar with the previous one, uh, as regards to diving a Jackson. We get their Jackson down to very low amount of health. Uh, he pops a health potion, so he's getting some health back, and that's probably the only reason why he lives. But my LZ decides to dive him, and... Yeah, it just gives him a free kill. You can't, he couldn't catch him with that aura. He didn't even need to go into the bush or juke or anything. It's just incredibly hard to dive a Jackson. He makes for great bait. So, once you get your warp shard on Jackson, he becomes a hell of a lot funner. If you notice there, our Rancor just died, turning this into a 4v5. And they're going to try and press their advantage, knowing that it's a 4v5. And try to push our bottom tower. I'll speed this up a bit. And pushing, pushing. I'm trying to get in position. You saw me run around there. I was trying to get in position to initiate on them. Animus sees our shadow, chases him. I see a Zeratul there. I see three of them moving up. And I'm going to warp frag into them. Ult them, setting up all our AoEs. We get lanced out, but that's one kill, two kill, three kill. Now watch. Soon to be four kill. Right, there's, there's the 4th kill, and then 5 kill. I guess our rank was back up, so it's more of a 5v5. 5 kill, and then, more important, Levy. We'll get Levy buff and ace. And from that point on, the game is heavy, heavily slanted to our favorite. If you actually notice, the score is currently 11-8, and that's after killing all 5 of them. So we were actually losing the game beforehand. Again, now that you have your warp shard as a Jackson, you begin to excel in teamfights, and you should always lead the battle. Even though I'm a squishy int hero, and we're losing this game as it is currently, I'm going to jump into the middle of three of them just to set up my alt, and see how perfectly it works out with Zeratul's and Kerrigan's alt on top. With the mass AoE combination, the enemy team can do little but run. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is as a Jackson for you to work with your team and how how great of a hero you are but only in a team context. Here I notice that our Drake is getting chased down and I'm too far away to save him. Uh, Drake is gonna die but the damage he managed to get out in that process gets Red Hydra low enough that I'll be able to kill him. Right? Uh, perhaps a better example is right after this where we continue pushing in to the tower and our Rancor runs around behind and he gets targeted by DARPA and would otherwise die but I get up there in time to slow DARPA to silence him and combined with Rancor's Sunflare gun we manage to kill him. So now that I've told you that as a Jackson your goal in a team fight is to jump in there and be the first one to use your skills and silence them all what happens if they're not all you know conveniently clumped up? In the next two scenes I show you that uh, you must know who to target in a team fight. In this case, uh, usually it would be a squishy caster like Rory here, who managed to cast his ult off but doesn't get his rebounder or his Molotov off because I've silenced him. From that point on, even though I'm taking a lot of damage from this DB, this is not a big deal. I still have my ult. I didn't waste it on him because, well, it was just one hero. Normally you wouldn't want to waste your ult on just one hero, though it is imperative to silence him. Because we got the Rory out of the way, because we got his Molotov out of the way, we managed to pick up an easy four kills right there. So what happens when you don't initiate on the right hero? 
uh, in this scene, you'll see me initiate on a Drake, uh, just because it's, you know, Electris and he has a global taunt. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna warp frag in there and I'm gonna silence him. And uh, Stevie comes out of nowhere, Rory gets off his Molo, and it turns really sour really fast for us. We're just lucky that we had, we had basically, uh, was that, we had four of our heroes there to fight two of them. And even that 4v2, we only, we, we get away losing two and they, we only get one kill from that. Had the rest of their team been there, that probably would have been a one for four at best exchange where they lost their Drake and we lost four of our heroes. One thing as a Jackson, you, you are not a hard carry. I see our hard carry is getting focused down. And if we continue going the same direction, both of us are going to die. So I try to dr distract them by running the opposite direction, knowing I have a warp shard and... Oh, wait. Let's try that one again. Okay, once again, I got another chance to save my Kerrigan. She runs down that way, so I'm going to run this way and keep these guys distracted. Now I'm going to run up here. And this time, I finally do it successfully. Yes, we both get away this time. In this last scene, uh, we're winning the game pretty handily, but if you, as you see on the minimap there, our, uh, our team just got caught at Aeon. Uh, they may be at one tower, but they're about to kill three of our players and make it a 2v1, and uh, I mean a 2v4, and of course our Drake is chilling in the pool completely AFK. So basically it's it's Jackson versus four, and I, I don't know, just watch this one. The power of Jackson, I guess. They're going to push up mid, thinking, okay, this is their chance to, to maybe turn this game around, and I'm just going to chill up here, hiding up here. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm screaming at my Drake at this point to, to get his head into the game. Uh, and I don't have any choice at this point. I have to go in there. One alt, silence. Second ult, silenced again, and uh, yeah, with the help of the martyr from the Drake, which I held them in his martyr for like ever, we win the game. Yeah, and so that's how you win the game with Jackson.